Hey everyone. So the last couple of videos we've looked at, we've had a projectile that was launched completely horizontally. And now I think um, it's about time that we tackle projectiles that are launched at an angle. So for this particular problem, imagine you have a ball, like a soccer ball, um, that gets kicked up at an angle. Um, so let's say this angle is 60 degrees to the horizontal, and the initial velocity um, of the ball is 12 meters per second as a result of this kick. And so we need to find, well, we can find a lot of things. Um, maximum height that the ball reaches, the velocity at maximum height, the time it takes to land, the time it takes to reach maximum height, how far away does it land, and the speed before it lands. The first thing that we want to do is resolve this vector at an angle. So for example, we know that we have a velocity of 12 meters per second. This is the launch velocity. I'm going to call it velocity initial at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal. So if we want to find the x component of velocity, that's the velocity that's given, multiplied by the cosine of theta, where theta equals the angle between the vector we're trying to resolve and the x-axis, which in this case will be 60. And when we want to find the y component, we can do so by taking that velocity vector times the sine of theta. All right, so here we go. This one will be 12 meters per second times the cosine of 60 degrees. And this one will be 12 meters per second times the sine of 60 degrees. So over here, we find that the x component of the initial velocity, so VOX, is 6 meters per second. And over here, the initial velocity in the y direction, the y component of this initial velocity, is about 10.4. Okay, so we can now add our x and y t-chart here to separate the x and y values that we know to kind of figure out what our approach is going to be. So time, our acceleration, initial velocity, final velocity, and displacement. And the same thing on the y side here. All right, so we know that acceleration in the y will be negative 10 meters per second squared, and acceleration in the x will be 0. Now that we have gotten the components of the launch velocity, we know our initial velocity in the x to be 6, and our initial velocity in the y is going to be up 10.4. So I'm going to make this positive 10.4. So in terms of a coordinate grid here, for the directions for this problem, I'm going to make down negative, up positive, and to the right positive, to left negative. So notice this 12 meters per second that was given as the launch velocity does not show up in this x and y t-chart. And the reason for that is because that is the resultant velocity. Um, you know, you can think of it as the actual launch velocity. And in this t-chart, we're just putting in the component of velocity, so the x component of velocity and the y component of velocity. Okay, anything else we know at this point? Mm, I don't think so. So now how can we find what we need? When I think about this soccer ball being kicked, I can sketch what the path of the ball is going to be. And I know that the maximum height will occur when the ball is at its highest height. And that's an interesting point in terms of motion because at the top, the velocity in the y is 0. This is when the ball is changing direction. So if I can use that, I can do some analysis in the, wall, in the y. At maximum height, the final in the y is 0 meters per second. So knowing that, is it possible for me to find time using the VF equation? I think so. 
so V final being 0 meters per second, V initial being positive 10.4 meters per second, our acceleration is known, can I find time? All right, so the time it takes to get to maximum height is 1.04 seconds. So I'm going to fill this in over here. Now notice that the time it takes to get to the top of the path here, this is half of the time of the entire flight. Now, when we launch this projectile, we launch it from the ground, and it's going to be landing at the same height. So when we draw the path, we notice that this has a completely symmetrical path. Later on, we'll see problems where it's not always this simple. So we can use the physics that we already know to our advantage for this particular problem. What's interesting is that we found the time it takes to get to max height. We don't really need to do a ton of mathematics to find the time it takes to land. Because the path is symmetrical, we can just multiply it by 2. So the time it takes to land is 2.08 seconds. OK, the velocity at the maximum height is something that we know. We know that in the y, the velocity is 0. And the velocity in the x doesn't change. So you found the x component of velocity over here to be 6 meters per second. And in the x, the acceleration is 0. So the x velocity is still the same at any point in the path of motion. So that one's done. All right, now to find maximum height, we need to use this time, the time it takes to achieve maximum height, or half of the time of the entire flight, to find max height. Um, so what I'm going to do is, in the y direction, I'm going to use the delta x equation to find delta x in the y. The initial in the y this time is 10.4, and our time is 1.04 seconds, plus, I'm going to run out of room, so I'm just going to put it underneath here, 1 half negative 10 meters per second squared times 1.04 seconds, and I'm going to square that entire time term. All right, and so we end up with 10.816 minus 5.408, and that gives us a delta x in the y of 5.408. And this delta x is positive. Um, that does make sense because this is the displacement that um, the ball takes from 0 to halfway through its flight, so that displacement would be up. So the maximum height is about 5.4 meters. Well, we've done a lot of work so far. A um, couple of things left to find here. How far away does it land and the speed before it lands? Because we have a symmetrical path and the assumption here that there's no air resistance, the speed before it lands is going to be equal to um, the speed with which it was launched because the launch site is the exact same height that it will land at. So as an example, the speed before it lands in the y direction is going to be equal to the y component of the velocity, except it's going to be negative in terms of velocity uh, because it's going down. This question only asks us for the speed, so we'll just give the magnitude only, which in this case is 10.4 in the y. And in the x, because there's no acceleration anyway, the velocity in the x is the same as it was when we started, which was 6. OK, so the last thing that we want to find is how far away does it land. So I'm going to give us a little bit more room here to do that. How far away does it land? OK. So I'm going to use delta x in the x equation here to help us out with this. And we're looking for delta x. The v initial in the x is 6 meters per second. 
and the time of the entire flight we found using Y analysis, and it was 2.08 seconds. Acceleration in the X direction is zero, so that whole component becomes zero, and delta X in the X is six times 2.08. which gives you 12.48, so about 12 and a half meters. I hope that this was helpful um, in terms of just reviewing some problem solving for projectiles launched at an angle. Um, let me know if you have any questions.